In yesterday's game, the Dallas Cowboys were able to get it done against a really, really good Los Angeles Chargers team. And today we're going to analyze the tape. To me, Dak Prescott deserves a lot of credit. Because Dak Prescott got killed by the media just a couple days prior to getting into this Chargers game. People were saying that he's not a good quarterback. Some people were saying it's time the Cowboys move on. And Dak Prescott stepped up and he ultimately got it done. Prescott was 21-30, 272 yards. He had a touchdown through the air and he had another touchdown on the ground, including a really, really nice read option. He kept the football and he ran it to the house. But it wasn't even just that part of his game. You know, in the fourth quarter on the very final drive that the Cowboys had the football, Dak Prescott stepped up and he got it done a number of times on third down. You know, there was a third and six, which was a key part, in my opinion, of this game for the Cowboys to ultimately win. Dak Prescott got pressured and he didn't take the sack. He didn't go down. He didn't give up. Instead, he got out of the pocket and he was able to keep his eyes downfield and he hit CD Lamb on this deep crossing pattern. And just like that, the Cowboys got into field goal range. But on that same drive, another third and nine, keep in mind, there's about three minutes left at this point. Once again, Dak Prescott steps up and he completes the pass at Brandon Cooks on this one. Third and nine. And with three minutes and 30 seconds left, the Cowboys could have just kicked the field goal in this moment and ultimately gave the Chargers the ball back. The Chargers would have had three minutes and 30 seconds left and two timeouts. Instead, they ended up wasting both timeouts. Instead, the Cowboys ended up eating up another minute of clock before the ball got back to the Chargers. And that ultimately put the Chargers in a really, really tough spot, right? But it was Dak Prescott that gave the Cowboys that opportunity. It was Dak Prescott that converted those third downs that ultimately allowed the clock to run down, forced the Chargers to waste two of their three timeouts. To me, Dak Prescott got it done, and he deserves a lot of credit for this win. Now, one of the big issues that I had yesterday with the offense was there were a lot of third and eights and third and nines and third and tens. And a big factor was because the offense line was not able to get it done on the ground. Right, first down, the Cowboys would run the football, and you're only picking up 2.3 yards per attempt. That's not good enough. That's going to put you into second and longs, third and longs, and that's not the way to have success. So the Cowboys really have to figure out how they're going to be able to uh, really step up and open up some run lanes. Because as a quarterback, if your offense is not able to run the football and have success, it makes it very, very, very difficult. And to take that a step further, the Cowboys also gave up five sacks yesterday among the offensive line. And that's just too many sacks for a quarterback to take. Now, some people make the argument that there are a couple the quarterbacks should have possibly thrown the ball away. And I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. You know, uh, this one here, you know, Dak was really trying to run with the football. He ends up taking the sack. There was another play in which CD Lamb actually fell. And then the quarterback was trying to make a play. He was trying to roll out of there. And ultimately, Khalil Mack made the sack on that one. And there were moments like this, right? But generally speaking, there were a lot of losing moments for the offensive line as well. If Dak Prescott didn't do what he did, it could have been even more sacks, right? If you had a quarterback that was not mobile, that wasn't able to extend plays, it could have been a lot worse than what it actually was, right? So the offensive line has to step up. They got to pass block better. They have to run block a lot better. And they got to get it going. And to me, you know, this Chargers team is a really good team, but they definitely have their fair shares of struggles. Plus, the Cowboys defense had a really, really good game. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But just kind of sticking with the offensive line, you got to do a better job. And Tyler Smith specifically has to do a better job. The guy had three massive penalties yesterday. He had a false start. He had two holding penalties. And that's just not good enough. One of his holds was a crushing hold because the Cowboys were driving downfield right before halftime. They're at like the 40-yard line. And his hold ultimately pushed the Cowboys back. And you can't have that if you're an offensive lineman. you got to hold your block. And not hold in the negative way, but hold in the positive way. right? You cannot hurt your offense the way Tyler Smith kind of did yesterday. Now, I'm not 100% sure if there's, you know, Tyler Smith is hurt or, or anything to that tune. At this point, he shouldn't be. He's three games back post-injury. But uh, you got to do a better job if you're Tyler Smith. Outside of that, you know, there were a handful of good plays by the offensive line. But... Just overall, just got to continue to step up and continue to play better. Now, I thought there was a big factor as to why the Chargers ultimately stayed within this game. Uh, to me, that was that was the referees. I, I felt like the referees, there were a lot of questionable penalties, a lot of questionable ones, right? Uh, one that comes to mind, and, and this one I may be alone on. You guys may not agree with it, and that's okay. But, you know, the J. Ron Kears hit on Justin Herbert where – they threw a flag and they penalized that. I didn't agree with that because 
One, I didn't feel like Justin Herbert was a quarterback in that moment. He was running with the football. Two, he wasn't even really sliding. Like at the very last moment, he saw Jaron Kears. He was just trying to fall straight downwards. To me, he was not sliding in that moment. I, I understand if, if the quarterback's full on sliding, you know, he's on his way to the ground. He's maybe touching the ground and then you hit him. That makes sense. That's the penalty. But I did not feel like this Jaron Kears hit was a penalty and they called it anyways. And it could have been third down possibly and the Cowboys could have possibly gotten off the field. So to me, I didn't agree with that penalty. There were a couple others that I did not agree with, including one where Marquise Bell actually got a sack, a really, really nice play by Bell to read, react, and make the play. And they penalized Sam Williams for the hands to the face. Now, I know it may look like it's a hands to the face, but trust me, it's it's not a hands to the face. Sam Williams actually has his hands to the shoulder pads of Rashawn uh, Slater here, the left tackle. And he's pushing those shoulder pads up into the neck area of that offensive tackle. And it may look like a hands to the face, but it's not. And I know this one does get called sometimes because it's hard for a referee to see in real time, especially if he's, you know, behind the offensive lineman. But to me, this is an automatic first down when the Cowboys just got an ultimately a sack on this play, right? So to me, that's another moment where I feel like the referees kind of helped out uh, the, the, the Chargers. And then there were two other moments. One led to a touchdown. I totally disagreed with this one as well. Uh, they called the pass interference on Stefan Gilmore. This was a spot foul, which ultimately allowed the Chargers to score the second touchdown that they ended up having. Uh, the reason why I didn't agree with this one was because I feel like, you know, getting your hands onto a, a wide receiver is a natural part of playing cornerback. In fact, if you guys watch this flip, right? If you guys watch the Chargers, defensive backs and how they were playing aggressive with the Cowboys wide receivers, you guys would agree that this is not a penalty on Stefan Gilmer. It's just a normal, natural play, right? He didn't push. He didn't hold. He didn't do anything. You can make the argument the pass was going to be incomplete anyways, and it was just uncatchable. So to me, those three penalties right there were, were massive moments because all of them led to first downs. All of them helped the Chargers. But the one that really was questionable to me was the uh, Cavante Turpin fumble. Now, I don't 100% know the rule books around this. Uh, I looked into it slightly. And to me, and I'm probably wrong here as well, to me, you can't take a player and push that player into another player on, on, on this punt. Now, I don't know if that's fact or not, but based off of what I actually saw from the actual rule book, you can't do that. So I'm not sure why this wasn't actually penalized on the uh, defensive back here for the Chargers. So Jalen Tober got pushed right back into him. That should have been a penalty. You're still interfering technically with Kevontae Turpin. I don't know. M maybe I'm missing that one, and I'm sure I'm wrong on that one, but that one didn't make sense to me. Uh, and this is a great transition into the defense because this one right here actually led to the second touchdown that the defense ultimately gave up. But I want to I want to take a step back and really give credit to the defensive side of the football. You know, I, I truly feel like the the, the Cowboys – defense ultimately won this game not that Dak Prescott didn't do his thing and win the game right and plus you always got to keep in mind offense defense special teams all have to work together to win football games that's just the NFL and how it works but I do feel like the defense really really helped this game a lot right uh, keeping in mind that the Cowboys started the ball they started the game with the ball and they went three and out to start this game you cannot do that. You cannot go three and out to start a game because when you go three and out, what's happening is now you're punting, you know, your punter standing at like the 15 yard line and he's going to punt the ball and the ball's going to probably land at the 40 yard line on the other side of the field. And if the team gets a good punt, they're maybe on their side of the field. And that's exactly what happened in this instance. The Cowboys punted the ball. The Chargers ended up returning that punt and they ended up starting at the 42 yard line, their own 42 yard line. So they only needed to go 42 yards to score a touchdown. That's a terrible spot to put the defense in. And that was because the Cowboys offense did not pick up any first downs to start the game. Now, ultimately, they started off slow, and, and we know that that's happened in the past. But here's the thing. Uh, once that moment of the game actually happened, the Chargers did go down and score a touchdown. And from that point, they didn't score another touchdown for most of the game. Right, The only other touchdown that, that the, the Chargers ultimately ended up scoring was from the Cavante Turpin fumble. And what's interesting about that, and I don't think a lot of people think about this, is the Cowboys actually forced the, the the Chargers to get off the field. And there was like eight, nine minutes left in the game at this point. The Chargers defense stepped up and got the stop. Eight, nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. 
The punt happened, Turpin fumbled the ball, and then the Chargers scored. So two of these touchdowns were basically short yarded situations for the Chargers on the offensive side, which tells me the defense had a really, really good day. And you guys can actually, you know, just go back and kind of watch it. The defense had a great day. A minus in Austin Eckler's screen pass that ultimately set up the touchdown, minus the pass interference on Stephon Gilmore, which ultimately gave them the other touchdown because they got down to like the four or five yard line. I felt like guys were absolutely crushing it. Uh, the Chargers offensive line, they say it's a top five offensive line. I did not see that yesterday. You know, uh, Deron Bland made so many nice plays on the back end. And then on the front end, guys like Demarcus Lawrence, Oso Diggies, who stepped up as well. Uh, all of those guys are game boss, man. Marquise Bell, Deron Bland, Osa, Demarcus all had a great, great, great game. Uh, Deron Bland probably had the best game among the guys. Uh, Deron Bland, a third and eight, had a pass thrown to him with Keenan Allen. He was right there in coverage. The quarterback, Keenan Allen, were not able to connect. Those a fourth and one a little bit later on in which the pass was thrown to Joshua Palmer. This was a red zone opportunity in which the Cowboys uh, were on the defense side and the Chargers went for it. And the Cowboys could have got the stop in that moment. And it was Deron Blind that stepped up. Single man, one-on-one -on -one against Joshua Palmer, a pretty good wide receiver. And Deron Blind breaks the pass up. Forces the turnover on downs. Then there was a third and ten a little bit later on. Same thing. He forces the incompletion. Deron Bland was forcing incompletions. The guy was being tested, and he stepped the hell up. Uh, even Stephon Gilmore got the, the game-winning interception. Michael Parsons gets a sack on the final drive of the game for the Chargers. The, the drive where the Chargers could have tied the football game. But the defense stepped up and, and made a couple of really, really nice plays. Marquise Bell had a couple of really nice plays as well, and i got to give him some credit. The play that sticks out to me was a screen pass that he read. Instantly blew it up. Looked very, very nice to watch kind of on tape. Uh, really, really nice job. I think another guy that impacted this game that should get some credit. Uh, and, and we'll do it twofold on this one. Uh, both Demarcus Lawrence and Oso Digizua had a, had great moments within this game. You know, the first play that was made really starts with Osa Odigizua. Uh, Odigizua ends up jumping the interior offensive line. He's going to blow this entire play up. And it loses four yards. This was first and ten. Now you're looking at a second and 14. And from the second and 14, you pick up some yards, you get into a third and one. And then Osa Odigizua once again blows the play up. And this time Osa Odigizua is going to get held. Third and one, he gets held. The ball goes back 10 yards. And then Demarcus Lawrence forces a hold. Same exact drive. The ball goes back again, right? These are the things that Demarcus Lawrence and Osa Odigizua are doing all game. They're getting pressured. They're winning their reps. They're forcing penalties. And to me, that's what you need from your defensive lineman, not named Michael Parsons, right? Because this, this offense is going to come out and they're going to focus in on Michael Parsons. The other guys got to step up. And yesterday, Odigi Zua, Demarcus Lawrence stepped the hell up and, and they made plays when plays needed to be made. And Leighton Van Der Esch's absence, Marquise Bell stepped up, made a bunch of really, really nice plays. And all of those guys deserve so much credit on the defensive side because ultimately they're the guys that stepped up when the game mattered and they won the game. Right, This was a really, really nice game all across the board. And to me, I think this is what the Cowboys have to just continue to do. You know, offense has to do their part. Defense has to do their part. Special teams, I think, failed a little bit in this game. But they have to continue doing their part as well. We've seen in the past that they were able to kind of get it done. Giants game kind of sticks out to me a little bit. Uh, and then Kevonta Turpin just has to keep his head up and, and return those punts as he gets the opportunities. Uh, yesterday, he had a pretty nice punt return on, on one of them. So... Overall, great team win if you guys ask me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.